According to Karl Marx, religion is meant to create illusory fantasies for the poor. He holds the view that economic realities prevent people from finding true happiness. Religion then becomes the way of escape, making people feel the difficulties they encounter in life are just okay because they will find true happiness in the next life. That is, religion does not fix the underlying causes of people's pain and suffering. Instead, it helps them forget why they are suffering and causes them to look forward to an imaginary future when the pain will cease instead of working to change circumstances now. Whichever way you see religion, it has always played an important role in our lives. However, through the media, both old and new, religion is even acquiring a much more prominent role in our lives. The media has helped in making religion more accessible and ubiquitous. Since the liberalization of the airwaves, religion institutions, mainly the Christian and Islamic religions, have used the media to spread their reach. Now, traditional religion, which has always been on the quiet, is also making a big deal out of it. It is common these days to see and hear fetish priests on both the electronic and print media advertising themselves and what they have to offer their viewers and listeners. Some, like one of the dreaded fetish priests in Ghana, Nana Kwekubunsam, stationed in Kumasi, has gone high-tech by getting onto the World Wide Web. With this, his clients need not travel from far and near to the Ashanti regional capital for consultation. With just a click of the mouse and the help of the keyboard, one gets the chance to chat with Nana Kwekubunsam. Now, there is a struggle among religious groupings in the attempt to buy slots in the media to preach. Support in the crown. The time slot one gets is such a big deal. Hallelujah. The programs are targeted at viewers of different ages and religious faith. Before the liberalization and privatization of the airwaves in Ghana, televangelism was a rare phenomenon in the country. The only time religious programs were broadcast on radio and television were on Sundays when the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation either played back recorded church services from a handful of Orthodox churches in the capital, Accra. Even after the liberalization of the airwaves, it took quite a while for charismatic and Pentecostal churches to make use of the media. The tide, however, turned at the request of the new millennium, and it is now commonplace to see televangelists flood the screens and airwaves in the country. With the help of the new media, that is the internet, the trend has become very common in recent times. Just with a click of the mouse and takes you hundreds of thousands of websites introducing you to one program or another, be it in the form of music, preaching, or books on religion. These days, most religious leaders even have personal websites. The prediction of a Nigerian preacher, Prophet T.B. Joshua, on the internet in October 2009 that the Ghana Black Satellite would win the Under-17 World Cup is a typical example of how the leaders use the media to spread their messages. I've seen it. First half, no go. Second half, no go. You do everything and your people will do everything. No way. This clip, termed as a controversial broadcast by Prophet T.B. Joshua, generated intense debate among soccer lovers in Ghana. The Ghanaian media came under severe criticism for making this televangelist their focus rather than the victory. Some people have taken a swipe at the media with an argument that the media is not true to the real issue and portrays a designed image of religion. Media works with things that can be measured or rationally described and observed, but religion relies upon faith and other transcendent intangibles. If this is the case, then what is the rationale behind the use of the media by religious groupings? Reverend Kofiwachiri has been a radio and television pastor for the past 15 years. He's also a pastor in one of the fast-growing charismatic churches in the country, the International Central Gospel Church. Reverend Ochre says in a much more modern complex world, they need the media which allows them to amplify their messages. 
Christianity mainly has to do with reaching the world. Uh, that was the great commission that Jesus gave to uh, the people, the, the Christians. He said, go into the world and make disciples, uh, teaching them to observe all that is written in the word of God. And you have to know that reaching the world is a very huge responsibility. Uh, you can do it one-on-one -on -one and uh, you can do it with the masses of people. The preachers or Christians and the church using the media is also a way of reaching out to the masses of people. Islam is one other religion making inroads in the media. Until recently, it was unusual to see or hear Islamic broadcasts. It is however common these days to see them on television, the internet, on the radio and in the papers. The use of the media has been cited as the main reason why the Islamic religion has become visible these days. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna dunya hulwatun khadira, wa inna laha mustakhlifukum fiha fayanzura kaifa ta'amaloon. Now, there are dedicated time slots for Islamic religious broadcasts. A number of Muslim scholars, sheikhs and imams appear on television and radio to preach. One of the people spearheading this crusade is Sheikh Arime Al Shaibu. He is a very busy man who crisscrosses the country every week to preach to hundreds of people. In spite of this, he finds time on television to meet face to face with people he's unable to reach. Sheikh Arime Al Shaibu thinks the media is such a relief to helping him reach more people. Religion is one of the agents of globalization. The media itself has become another means of, of globalization. And so um, if you want to send a message to millions of people within one second, the media offers that opportunity. On special occasions like the celebration of eight festivals, the religion becomes greatly visible as activities are carried live on almost all the networks in the country. While broadcast evangelists see the media as a God-given tool through which they can reach the world with their message, research on religious television programs indicates that the actual audience of most religious programs is highly segmented and that those who watch usually do so for specific reasons. As the King of Kings. Since their emergence on the Ghanaian religious scene in the 1970s, the charismatic Pentecostal churches have adapted an overt strategy of public presence informed by a double portion of spreading the gospel and marketing their religious organizations as well as their leaders. Thanks in part to their aggressive public presence strategy, they have now become very visible and above all, highly audible in the public sphere. I will yes for them all. I can't hear your amen. As their audiences observe the healings that take place on the screens and hear the messages of assurance, they tend to spend time to watch them so they could find solutions to their problems. But what specific role does this play in the lives of the audience? One of the most valuable theoretical approaches to understanding the connection between the content of a specific program and the nature of the audience it attracts is that of the uses and gratifications approach to mass communication effect. This approach stresses that one must consider not only the influence of the message being communicated, but also the use being made of the message by members of the audience as they actively seek, select and interpret communications necessary for the satisfactory management of their lives. So what use do people make of the messages preached in the media? Yes, I do watch um, religious programs and I enjoy them a lot especially when it's in the video more than the radio. Well, I enjoy watching it and normally listening to it, to the word of God, actually, because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing the, the word and hearing by the word of God. So I believe as much as I watch it, my faith increases. Uh, usually, uh, I wanted to know much about the religious program when I usually watch TV, uh, the show of uh, Pastor Chris. Uh -huh. especially when I go through his uh, rhapsody and then things that I read from it. It's a good healer. I watch Apostolic Heritage, uh, Kwanchiakra, and I've seen so many 
uh, Christians this thing in the, the telling. After they have preached the, the, the word finish, you know, I receive something in me and I move it. Varied reasons why people spend time watching, listening and reading about religion. But many worry about the effect of religion on the masses, especially its content as exhibited in the media. Reverend Dr. Fred Digbe is one of those worried about the content of what is shown on the television or preached on radio. There are things that are meant for home consumption. I mean, if somebody came to your, 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 your meetings and uh, they were slain by the spirit or uh, demon, demonized, or they confess they are witches and all those things. Now, that's the confine of the church, if they came for that purpose. Do you really have to take that and broadcast the whole world? Do you invade somebody's privacy to show that you are powerful? So some of those things, for me, they are either done out of ignorance or self-projection. So it's not that the content. Sometimes we are just too lazy to, be, to discriminate in terms of the audience. If religious activities exhibited in the media meet the needs and expectations of the people, it would translate into the development of the country. But Karl Marx again argues that this is not the case. He says religion is the opium of the masses that distracts them from thinking about real economic issues, hence deepening their underdevelopment. This is because it provides reasons and excuses to keep society functioning just as it is. This is a point endorsed by Dr. Nana Obri Yabwa of the Sociology and African Studies Department of the Accra Polytechnic. He thinks the search in religious activities is rather retarding individual and national development. The media has made us to think that the only way we can develop is uh, developing uh, spiritual industries. And they have taken over our real manufacturing industry, the sector which can propel our development. What I see on TV and others, some are irrational. You see, irrational thinking. Uh, you cannot develop when people think irrationally, thinking that even if you have worms, if you shout Jesus, the worms will go out. How many times do you dedicate to uh, thinking of uh, inventions, innovations? And for Reverend Dr. Fred Dibbe, there is no justification for the millions religious organizations spend on the media. The man who is also a lawyer has been a member of the National Media Commission for two terms. He argues that the hefty investment involved could be used in activities that can directly improve the lives of people. It is good to go and share the, the gospel message. So in that sense, spending money to propagate the gospel is good, it's proper, it's in order. But where do you draw the line? I think that really is the issue. How much is too much? Some of the billboards that we have seen and some of the costs that we hear, some of them are outrageous. Some studies were done a very long time ago to find out whether advertising has really an impact on the growth of the church. And it was discovered that they do not. What makes the difference is sometimes the simplest thing. Satisfied customers who bring other satisfied customers. So why advertise if there is really no positive correlation between advertising and the growth of religion? Why the huge investment and the rush by many religious organizations to be in the media? Sounds confusing. But the executive secretary of the Advertising Association of Ghana, Francis Dazi, justifies why it is not out of place to pay the huge amount for religious broadcasts. There are people in hospital, not through any fault of theirs. There are people who have to travel outside the jurisdiction of their home churches. They still have to read their pastors, don't they? So these are technology that has come of age and are being utilized by the religious leaders who know the needs of their people, who knows the taste of their people, who knows that their people are spending more time at the internet cafe than sometimes behind the TV sets. Aside the Advertising Association boss, there are other media and religion experts who see the rise of religion as important for the country's development. 
Reverend Kofi Ochre, for example, argues that it serves a positive role in society, which therefore makes every penny spent in the media to promote the cause of religion worth it. The media is not cheap, but so is reaching out to people not cheap. It's a way of carrying information across. Uh, when you look at the numbers per se, you would, th you would easily ask, uh, conclude and say that uh, the churches are using huge monies in that area. At the same time, we also look at the lives that have been transformed through the same process. We also look at uh, people who have been improved through the same process. Those who have also learned a lot. People who acquired quality information through the same process. There is again one other side of development religion is promoting using the media. That is peace and harmony. This was evident, especially during the 2008 elections, when tensions were high. One thing that helped was the constant appeals from religious leaders using both the electronic and print media. So, according to Sheikh Aramayao, this aspect of development that religion and the media are promoting takes. The advantage for us now is that it helps us, you know, talk across the religious divide and be able to build an environment of tolerance and harmony um, where a Christian is prepared to listen to a Muslim preaching and where the Muslim is prepared to listen to Christian teaching. Like I do myself, I listen to uh, Pastor Otabel uh, all the time. He's one of the favorite Christian preachers that I listen to and I don't, I don't disdain, I mean, to, 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 to mention that. I bet you if I sit on television on, on Friday within the, just the one hour that I do, uh, if you were to estimate how many people I'm able to reach out to, in fact, from within and beyond the borders, the borders of Ghana, for example, that it tells you that I will tell you that I have achieved an aim. Uh -huh. And whatever price I put on this, <laughs> uh, it's, it's worth it. So in this sense, religion and media are playing a very significant role in the peaceful development of the country. Well, Karl Marx had three reasons for disliking religion. First, he says it is irrational. That is, religion is a delusion and a worship of appearances that avoids recognizing underlying reality. His second reason is that it negates all that is dignified in a human being by rendering them excessively obedient and more open to accepting the status quo. And lastly, religion is hypocritical. There is no doubt about the negatives, but there are potential positives. Religion plays a very important role in the society as it preaches the need for people to remain peaceful and coexist. Unlike many other African countries, Ghana did not join the League of war torn countries in the 2008 general elections, partly due to the significant role religious leaders played with the help of the media. It is undisputable the fact that the media is playing a very profound role in the rapid spread of religion in our country. For media and religion to contribute towards the development of this nation, it is important that we discuss the ways in which we are using the media for religious purposes in this country.